But I stand here because this factory is a slight reflection of what my father and I share, the type of relationship we have. As a young woman, he instilled in me that with the, the belief that as long as I have faith and vision, any goal is achievable. He taught me the importance, he taught me the great importance of determination, perseverance, and most importantly, Children, my dream, even against all odds, because as you know, I'm a woman in and all male dominated sector. I remember in 2015, prior to the signing of our MOU with Mrs. Adney, I sat my father down and told him all the great plans and ideas I had for this project because I knew he wasn't just going to easily hand it to me. Even though I was a medical science graduate and I was about to sign my master's in public health at that time. But because of my few years of work experience, I knew I had to really prove myself to him. So I'm grateful that after hundreds of features and presentations, I was able to prove myself that I was going to be a great value to this organization. And as some of you, or most of you here, knew my father as an incredibly diligent businessman, a man of honor, a man of vision, a man that we know has supported and pushed several policies that have benefited many Nigerians, especially in the agricultural sector. For me, he wasn't just my father, he was my mentor. He was my best friend. And as I often used to tease him, my business partner. But the most important thing is he was not only a caring father, but he cared for the progress of his community and the livelihood of all its people. For as long as I can recall, he had been brewing ideas of how he can merge together his love and passion for agriculture and manufacturing with the importance of improving the lives of women and children across Africa. And this factory that stands right here is the perfect example of his dream. A factory that empowers its community by lifting the, the people in the community. For example, we work with local farmers by training them and we also uptake their raw materials for our usage. It's also a factory that improves the healthy that improves the quality of lives of women and children and promotes promotes their well being due to the products that we produce. I wish he was here to witness the immense support, the great progress and not only from his team but also from each and every one of you that's present with us here today. I would like to deeply thank each and every one of you for supporting his dream, supporting this dream, and supporting my father, and giving us the courage to keep this dream alive. I would like to personally thank our father of the family, my father and uncle, Al Haji Aliko, for giving me a glimpse of hope that I saw as lost completely, for making me know that no matter what life throws at you, there's always an opportunity and courage and drive to keep going forward. So I thank each and every one of you, the NUTK team, for giving us all the support that we've needed, the dancer and NUTK team for working endlessly to make sure that no matter all the challenges that this year have put on our table, no matter all the effort that the environment has put against us, we still push to make sure that the dream has come to life. So on behalf of my family, we truly appreciate it and I would like to, and I would like to take this opportunity to make sure that I, I, I emphasize that I hope each and every one of you goes back home today learning something new about our factory and I hope this fruitful collaboration will continue to help us to empower and most, most importantly save the lives of women and children across the globe. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you Aziza for sharing your emotion with us this morning. I know it was not easy. Thanks. 
His Excellency, Honorable I'm very proud to be here today. I'm very proud to be here today. This factory is a dream of two families living in the same future. It's also the achievement of two teams, Danza and Nutrizet Group, working hardly together to create what you will visit today, Nutriki. Being a woman, as Mr. Sunny was used to say, being a daughter, we are daughters, and being inspired by our dad, being mum, uninspired, our children, being a little girl who want to go to school, and being a teenage girl and building your future, and this morning being two women with Aziza, who stand here in front of this impressive assembly to propose a solution to fight against malnutrition. Today, we are all in Nigeria, the big one in Africa, the nation of summary victories and success. And thus, two million children are still suffering from acute malnutrition. 32% of Nigerian children are suffering from chronic malnutrition. But if we are all here today, it's because we know and we trust we can change that. With the competencies, resources, motivation, willingness, and determination that I see here, I know that with all of you, we can fight malnutrition. I know that with all of you, we can support mother during their pregnancy. I know that with all of you, we can support the first 1,000 days of the children with nutrition and give the chance to the parents to love, play, and interact with their children because the right supports nutrition, it's good development. No child in Nigeria anymore should open his eyes for the first time without the best luck to develop himself and his life. Nutrica will manufacture this product that prevents and treats malnutrition for all the social and humanitarian actors. But Nutrica will also be part of a broader development for the region of Kano by providing jobs as well as working with thousands of local farmers in order to evaluate the local raw materials. Humbly, we want this factory being a tool to offer you plump peanut to treat urgently those who need and invent with you the solution to eradicate malnutrition tomorrow. I'm today certain that if we want strongly and firmly we can help every single children, every single mother. And so we will make Nigeria a country without malnutrition, where children will be able to play, dream, learn, and become the people that will take care of their family and build the future of the country. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. Uh, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, the Honorable Minister of Trade Investment, I mean Trade uh, Industry and Investment, Your Royal Highness, the Emir of Kano, and uh, the representative of His Royal Highness, the Emir of Vichy, the Ambassador, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of France, uh, Mrs. Adeline, and uh, Aziza, uh, Peter, who is the representative of uh, uh, UNICEF, former IG, MD Abubakar, uh, chairman of APC, party that is here with us, the Sani Damuti family, the Dantata family, and I want to stand with the existing protocol that is fully established. 
I feel honored and elated to be the chairman of this great occasion. The Commissioner of Nutri K Limited New Factory here in Kano. This event also serves as the formal rollout of the ready use therapeutic foods, which is RUTF and other nutritional supplement produced by the company. Nutri K is a leading indigenous company established to manufacture quality and nutritious food products to support the population affected by malnutrition. I commend the board and management of the company for the bold initiative of building this new massive factory dedicated to the manufacturing of RUTF that will revolutionize the fight against hunger and severe acute malnutrition in Nigeria. Nigeria needs to end the scourge of this severe acute malnutrition and the establishment of this factory today takes us closer to that goal and I'm sure we'll achieve that goal very, very soon. I recall my late brother, Alajisani, telling me that he will start local production of RUTF in Kano to complement the company's efforts at fighting malnutrition in Nigeria. I'm glad that his vision has come to fruition today. We didn't start today, he has started a couple of years ago, but today it is a very, very remarkable day for us. He was a visionary leader and his legacy lives on. I will make sure that we continue with it. Malnutrition, according to the World Bank, is one of the world's most serious but least addressed development challenges. Its human and economic costs are enormous, falling hardest on the poor women and children. Children are most vulnerable to the hunger and malnutrition in the world. Malnutrition can have a lifetime effect on a child. The first few years of a child's life are very, very crucial for growth and development. According to uh, the World Health Organization, well-nourished children are 33% more likely to escape poverty as adults. On the other hand, childhood malnutrition can lead to a lifetime consequences, including lower IQ, poor social emotional skills, and weaker immune system. So it is very, very important. It is not a joke. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, production of RUTF in Nigeria is important to us as it is one of the requirements for achieving the strategic objective of Ali Kodongote Foundation, which is ADF, which is to reduce the number of lives lost to malnutrition and disease. Combating severe acute malnutrition, which we call SAM, in children is at the core of Ali Kodongote Foundation's program. It is our entry point for improving the outcome of children's lives using our investment in health, education, and economic empowerment to help lift people out of poverty. RUTFs have been found to revolutionize the treatment of uncomplicated forms of severe acute malnutrition among children. My foundation believes that Nigeria should lead and our own, uh, I mean, uh, should lead and own her own programs and products. We believe in social solutions to our problems. Our nutrition flagship initiative is titled Ali Kodangote Foundation Integrated Nutrition, which we call ADFIN program, to tackle the scourge of to tackle the scourge of hunger and malnutrition. Alfin program was designed to start right here in Kano, and that I'm sure you know that we're all, you know, myself, and all the family of Dan Tata and Dongote, we originated from Kano. And so Kano is our first state of call. And God's willing, it will be implemented across 13 northern states that have acute malnutrition Race. Your Excellencies, 
Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, and royal fathers that are here with us, in closing this address, we at Ali Kodongoti Foundation pledge to enter into partnership with governments, local governments, and local producers of RUTF in order to guarantee adequate supply directly to the primary health care centers that are designed, uh, designated for the treatment of uh, uh, some on a sustainable basis. I want to thank you all for receiving this invitation and also for honoring us to come here to commission this great factory of which hopefully they will start exporting out of uh, this factory to other various countries that don't have this same facility. I thank you very much for listening. The president of Dangote Group of Companies, Alhaji Ali Dangote, the richest man of Africa, and the son of the Shoi Okano, the French, new French ambassador to Nigeria, who is here in Kano for the first time, members of Kano State Executive Council, and the chairman of our great party, the family of late Al Haji Sani Dangote, representative of UNICEF, former IGP MD Abubakar, the industrialist and the investors in Kano State who are here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. In fact, when I came to this location for this event, I saw Danza, I saw Notre K Limited, I became nostalgic. Nostalgic about our brother, our friend, Al Haji Sani Angote. May God give him a little gender for those. I could recall that uh, the letter invited me for this occasion before the date was changed, was signed by late Sani Angote. And here today we are commissioning this important project without him. That is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But his legacy will continue to grow from strength to strength, especially with the help of his senior brother, Al Haji Aliko Nangoti. Kano State is the most popular state in the Federation. There's no doubt about that, even if Lagos is listening. The facts that cannot be disputed. But that has far reaching implication. Because when you have a high population, then you are at risk. Your population can be an asset or your population can be a liability. With a high rate of malnutrition, I can say that if we continue along this line, a population is a liability. So we have to do all what it takes in order to make our population an asset. We are an industrial state. We are an agricultural state. We need population. We need men and women. We need strong young men. But all these are not possible if we are suffering from malnutrition. According to the world record, for every three children, one is malnourished. Mal nour so you can see in Kano we are not exception. So Kano State is so conscious of this problem and we are ready to partner with any organization in order to improve the situation. I'm happy to hear that uh, the president of Angote Group of Companies, Alhaji Ali Angotele, Angote, has offered to sign an MOU with Kano State Government in order to make 
fighting malnutrition, a sustainable program. Kano State is ready for that. We have to thank him for other MOUs that we sign, especially on the eradication of polio, and also especially on the mother and children health here in Kano State. We have to thank you. We are, st we are still working on that MOU. We are still implementing that MOU together with him, including the Will Emelina Foundation. We have also signed an MOU with UNICEF on this particular program. In fact, Kano State purchases about 100 million every year on these products. And I would like to direct all the 44 local governments in Kano State as a startup to purchase 2 million naira each of these products for distribution to their children, especially in the rural areas. So a total amount of 88 million naira be purchased and distributed to the children of Kano State. Kano State government will continue to provide an enabling environment for such industries to flourish. Security is a very important issue. We have taken some strategic measures first to ensure full coordination of security operatives in Kano State, even including the security related organizations to have face to face meeting and interaction with core security agencies for exchange of information, exchange of data, and exchange of strategies. That is one strategy that is working in favor of Kano State. Two, we have introduced technology, which I will not like to go into details to that, but it is effective and we are benefiting from that. The other one is community policy, where members of the community are conscious of their security, are conscious of their environment, and they relate well to security agencies pertaining to security situation in their environment. We assure you, we continue to build up on this synergy to ensure that we produce a conducive environment for business to flourish. For this particular industry, it is multidimensional. The importance of this industry is multidimensional. It has already been mentioned. They are producing nutrients. They are producing food that will bail out our malnutrition problem. Kano State Government has already established a malnourished children rehabilitation center. Those children who are malnourished, we have a center that they can be rehabilitated and then we continue building on feeding them well so that they do not fall back to the malnutrition status. This industry provides employment, of course, for our people, for our young men and women. And apart from the protection of products that are important, they also help us in our internally generated revenue because we collect revenue also from this factory. And also, this factory has a number of those who produce various raw materials for the consumption of this industry. So that chain also continues. And there is no doubt, it is the people of Kano State who are benefiting from this. 
So ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for coming. And we assure you, we have interest in this industry. And we shall continue to patronize this industry because of the symbiotic relationship between industry, this industry, and Kano State. Thank you, and God bless. I, I'd like to state that uh, I'm indeed very, very happy to be here today for one major reason. Uh, my friend and brother, the late Aladi Sari Dangote, spent many hours worrying me about this factory. On many occasions, he would call me at all times of the day to complain about certain policies of government that were making it difficult for him to put this factory together. And uh, today, I'm really very, very happy to see that uh, it was he was able to do it. Even though he's not here to be with us at this uh, commissioning, I'm happy and I know, I have no doubt that wherever he is, he'll be happy with what has been done here today. The second comment I want to make, uh, Your Excellency, only yesterday we were in Abuja at the uh, launch of the uh, uh, logo for the Dalla Dry Port and uh, the uh, Cardo Economic Summit. And at that function, there was a big debate as regards to uh, between Lagos and Cardo, which is the bigger uh, commercial center. Uh, with what I've seen in Cardo today, Your Excellency, uh, when I get to Lagos, I shall tell them that they have to up their game, that like Kano is really moving fast. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is, a great, it is indeed a great honor to be at the commissioning of this state-of-the-art ready-to-use therapeutic foods, or ETF factory. I congratulate our daughter, Aziza Sadi Dangote, the entire board of directors, the management, and every member of staff of this great organization for the achievement of this more laudable milestone. In my role as Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, I attend the commissioning of many factories, as I think it is important to show support to everyone that makes an investment in Nigeria's manufacturing industry. Today, however, is special. This factory is not just an employer of labor and a contributor to Nigeria's economy. It manufactures products to serve the most vulnerable members of our community and to fight malnutrition. Nigeria is a country rich with natural resources and an abundance of arable land and agricultural produce. It is painful to remember that despite this abundance, Nigeria has the second highest number of children suffering from stunted growth in the world. UNICEF reports that 32% of children under the age of five suffer from this condition, and that an estimated two million children and 7% of women suffer from malnutrition. I commend Nutricent, Dansa, and nutri -K for doing its part to lessen this burden. The world is changing and profit is no longer the only bottom line. Areas like sustainability, a business's effect on the environment, and most importantly, the effect on the lives of the people that live and work in that environment are just as fundamental. Social impact investments like this are the future of business. The federal government is committed to encouraging investors to think beyond returns and take into consideration the social good that can come out of their investment. There is a quote by late United States President John F. Kennedy that I love, and I quote, the war against hunger is truly mankind's war of liberation, unquote. I'm pleased to be here on the front line as we take another step towards winning this battle. I thank you for your time, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Sallallahu <laughs> 
kowace al'umma misali shine dukan kasashen da suka wadace da abinci mai gina cikin sun fi samun koshin lafiya da ci gaba ye da wadanda suke fama da kalubale na rashin abinci mai gina ciki duk da bambance bambance na jinsi da ake samu na al'umma abinci yana daya daga cikin muhimman abubuwan da suke hada kan bil adama kuma suka yi tarayya a kansa suke amfani da shi a kullum a matsayin sanaduri na rayuwa duk da cewa akwai wasu wurare a duniya dan da saboda talauci da kuncin rayuwa al'umar su suna fama da fadita shi wajen sabon abin kalaji to haka kuma akwai al'umar da suke fama da kalubale na rayuwa saboda cututtuka da suka addabe su saboda yawan cin abinci da cin abinci fiye da kima ba tare da bin ka'idoji na kiyaye lafiyar ciki ba babu shakka kyakkyawan abinci mai gina ciki yana da muhimmanci ga dukkan jama'a masu shekaru daban daban amma ya fi amfani ga kananan yara wadanda suke rukunin shekara biyar dan kada girman su ya tawaya dan haka ya zama wajibi ga rami iyaye da shugabanni mu tabbatar da cewa ayyam wadanda su ne za su zama shugabannin al'umma a gumbe su zama cikin yarayi mai wada yanayi mai wadatar abinci mai gina ciki wanda shine zai taimaka musu wajen bunkasa tunanin su da tasowa cikin kuzari da koshin lafiya da bayar da kudumawar su wajen ci gaban al'umar mai gida abin ta kaici ne idan muka lura da cewa alƙalma sun nuna cewa sama da yara miliyan 14 ne ke fama da matsalar karancin abinci a Nigeria yayin da kimanin yara miliyan 3 ke mutuwa duk shekara saboda rashin abinci mai gina ciki wannan ba abu ne da za mu zuba ido ya ci gaba da fukuwa ba dole ne mu tashi tsaye mu tukaru wannan kalubale don a maganta shi abin farin ciki a gare mu ne cewa da ruwa da wannan hali da muke fuskanta ya sa majalisar habaka tattalin arzikin Najeriya ta nemi duk masu ruwa da saki su hada kai wajen dakilin kalubalan rashin abinci mai gina jiki da sauran batutuwa da suka shafi wannan kasa don haka muna yabawa dukkan hukumomin gwamnatin tarayya da na jihohi kungiyoyin da suke fafituka a wannan bangare kamar yadda kowa ya sani lafiyayen abinci mai gina jiki yana rage nauyin kulawa da lafiyar jiki don haka muna kira ga wannan hadin gwiwa da ake kaddamarwa a yau da ya ci gaba kuma ya kara zuwa jari a harkokin bincike don samun ci gaba mai dorewa da kayayyakin da ake sarrafawa muna masu tabbatar muku da goyen baya da hadin kan masarautar Kano da dukkan sauran masarautu wanda nake shugabancin majalisar su kan wannan kamfani da abubuwan da za su yi da za su dinga gudanarwa don habaka wannan bangare na rayuwa muna godewa Alhaji Ali Kodan Goti na godewa iyalin margayi Alhaji Sani da dukkan wadanda suka ba da gudunmawa tun daga farkon kawo wannan shawara har zuwa yau da ubangiji ya dafe mu da kaddamar da wannan kamfani Allah ya kare mutuncin mu da addino mu Allah ya mu lafiya da zaman lafiya iyayen mu da malamin da shugabannin mu da suka koma ga ubangiji Allah ya jadda da musu rahama Allah ya ci gaba da mu albarkacin su idan ba a dimi yayi 
Allah is our standing with that. Assalamu This great achievement, not just for the people and children of Kano, but for the, all the children in Nigeria. It has been a long two year journey in which UNICEF and UTRK have been working together to ensure that there is certification at a time when there was a pandemic and a time when there was confusion and uh, disarray. However, we have got there in the end and I want to congratulate UTRK on their tenacity and focus to try and achieve this today and apologize of the delay in the certification. But the important thing is the outcome, not when. It has been great working on this. 20 years ago today, I personally happened to be working with Neutral K and Valid International to help develop Plumpy Nut in Goma in Eastern DRC. 20 years later, we have a factory here in Kano, a city dear to my heart. Out of approximately 40 million children under the five in Nigeria, 17 million suffer from one form of malnutrition or another. Here in Kano, just over 100,000 children suffer from wasted, being wasted. Between Kano, Katsina and Jigawa, 292,000 children suffer from being wasted. We can now do something about that with local produce and local expertise. However, prevention is more effective than cure. And Your Excellency, the Governor of Kano, we've been working together to ensure that effectively we can address both wasted and stunted children in, in uh, the Kano state. Together we can increase the preventative services through the distribution of vitamin A supplementation, of which we have done 5 million, deworming, the taking of uh, iron folate acid supplements for pregnant women, early exclusive and continued breastfeeding, to ensure that every child receives a diverse diet so they can thrive as good young children of Nigeria. However, there are times when urgent action is also needed to scale up these interventions. We recognize this and together with the Aliku Dangoti Foundation, UNICEF is working both in Kano and across the Northwest to ensure that that is done. Only last week we were working together to ensure that five LGAs are covered. This will move to 13. But our collective challenge is how we can move right across to the 44 LGAs of Kano so no child is left behind. It is our collective responsibility to ensure that every one of these children gets the treatment they deserve. This wonderful Nutric plant being commissioned today will facilitate that timely availability of plumpy nuts for the local needs of Kano and the rest of Nigeria. This will enable the government and partners to procure supplies locally instead of importing local, uh, locally um, importing uh, RUTF and we can have it immediately as we will see soon. One of the challenges faced today, and uh, our previous speaker alluded to this, is to successfully produce RUTF. Raw, raw materials like aflatoxin-free peanuts must be made available. I would challenge Minister of Agriculture and local farm and productions in, in the private sector to ensure that all these such supplies are available in Nigeria as indeed should food security uh, be made uh, available so that children can be brought up with diverse diets. Before I end, I would like to highlight that commissioning of this Nutri-K plant exemplifies the types of partnerships we look 
for in our work to improve the lives of children, our partnerships with government, our partnerships with the private sector, our partnerships with the United Nations, and our partnerships with the children and young people themselves. The private sector and their investment here um, by Danza, the Dancer Group and by France, by Nutriset, is a critical part of that partnership. It also includes support from the government of Kano for providing the enabling environment to establish a factory of this nature. I would like to assure you, Your Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, of UNICEF's commitment to supporting the government of Nigeria and the private sector and his promise to improve the nutritional status of every Nigeria child. The second ingredient is the state-of-the-art technologies and quality products that are, of course, an important factor. And I'm very happy that NutriK has recently been approved for procurement by UNICEF. This is a crucial milestone for this company and also for the beneficiaries of NutriK products. As representative of one of the major donor countries at a multilateral level, I really consider it important, and I'm, I'm happy for this, that UN organizations prioritize the sourcing of locally made products for their programs when available. Such a significant investment and approach by Nutricep deserves the utmost respect. And actually this investment of Nutricep in Cano with the millions of euros invested and also the direct, the dozens of direct jobs created is a symbol of our presence, the French presence in Nigeria. French companies here indeed give priority to local investments rather than to exports from France. Therefore contributing to local employment, training, know-how, economic diversification and the backward integration which is a priority for the Nigerian government. In this dairy product sector, like in others, the French government stands ready to provide technical assistance, expertise, financing and advocacy to all stakeholders from private and public sector, driven by the same ambition to contribute to foster economic development and bilateral relations. Long live Nigeria, long live France, Long live the UN and especially long live UGK factory. Thank you very much. I want to give a special vote of thanks to everyone that has managed to come here today. Uh, for all the Muslims who are here and the Christians, we know man plans and God plans best. Today we're here to witness my father's vision, dream, something that was ignited by the will of the Alaja Ali Kodangote Foundation to fight malnutrition in the Adfit program. It started as an idea, as a concept, something that we wanted to work with Nutriset to import. But of course, in the true vision of the Dan Gote family, Alhaji decided, no, we will do what Dan Gote does. We will do backward integration. We will make sure that it benefits not only the project of the Adfin, but also the long-term future of Kano, Nigeria and the people of this great country. In doing so, I want to go ahead and also extend a great appreciation to the friends of the family, friends of my father's who are here today, uh, Dantata family, Dangote family who are here today, uh, other people who have supported my father directly, indirectly, and most of all, we want to all please thank my father, my uncle, Alaja Eliko Dangote, because what he has done behind the scenes, what he has done for my father, for this project, I do not think we can say thank you enough. So please go ahead and give him a round of applause and appreciate him for that. I want to also thank His Excellency, the Governor, for all the support he's given Al Haji over the years, uh, the friendship he's offered him over the years, the support we know he will continue to give us on, the, uh, on this project. And we also want to thank him for being uh, a patronage, not only Kano State, but he has also inspired other states like Kaduna to come and patronize our products in uh, Nutri-K. I want to go ahead and also appreciate the French government, uh, president also of Nigeria, the French uh, 
President Macron, President Buhari, because they actually signed our MOU. They witnessed the signing of our MOU in Abuja. And today, uh, Your Excellency, you are here to see the real project come to life. I know it is something my father would have loved to be here for. We sat, we planned, we discussed, but Allah planned differently. So I want to thank everybody here today for supporting this project, for making time out of your busy schedule, uh, some at the last minute to, to be here. I want to thank you and appreciate you. And we want to let you know that uh, this is just a small part of the phase. We hope and we envision that this project will have a far-reaching effect on not only the economy of Nigeria, but all the malnutrition people around the world. Because we have the key ingredients in this product cut across the entire value chain. You're talking about peanuts, milk, whey powder. You're talking about palm oil. And these sectors, I believe, uh, Honorable Minister, Nigeria has a backward integration strategy that will impact the economy. So this is going to be one of those benchmark projects that will show that, yes, we can take everything from Nigeria and support the government's initiative. So on that note, I want to thank, I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank the Honorable Minister of Trade uh, investments because he has supported us extraordinarily on this project. He has not only supported us, he has given my father the confidence to keep pushing when all hope seemed lost and will continue to come to you, Honorable Minister, to continue to support our project and ensure that we fulfill our father's vision as well as the vision of the Dan Gote group and Dan Gote family. Thank you very much, ladies. A safe trip, uh, ladies and gentlemen, safe trip back home. Um, Allah's prayers and protection for everyone. Thank you very much.